Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might be saved through him. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us all with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. There will be music to accompany this service. Uh, Nancy will be playing at least two verses of each hymn, no one singing, thank you to COVID. But we hope that this service brings you into a fellowship uh, at a time when it is greatly needed and that you will feel in our presence as we feel your presence. And Nancy plays the first opening hymn. soul, 
and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, Lord have mercy upon us, and, and write both these thy laws, laws in our hearts, hearts we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And have with thy spirit. Let us pray. The college for Christmas. Almighty God, who hast given us thine only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, Grant that we, being regenerate and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit, through the same our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the same Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. And we shall have the first read. The first reading is from the 52nd chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at the 7th verse. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen. Your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. For in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together in the singing, you wounds of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hear these words from Psalm 98. We'll sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things, with his own right hand and with his holy arm hath he got himself the victory. The Lord hath declared his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He hath remembered his mercy and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. And all the ends of the world have seen the salvation of our God. Show yourselves joyful unto the Lord, all ye lands. Sing, rejoice, and give thanks. Praise the Lord upon the harp. Sing to the harp with the song of thanksgiving. With trumpets also and the sound of the horn, O oh, show yourselves joyful before the Lord the King. Let the sea make a noise and all that is therein, the round world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands, and let the hills be joyful before the Lord, for he is come to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second reading. The second reading is from the first chapter of Paul's letter to the Hebrews, beginning at the first verse. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by the Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is a reflection of God's glory, the exact imprint of God's very being, 
and he sustains all things by his powerful will. When he made purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, Who are my son? Today I have begotten him, or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, that all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels win, and his servants flames of fire. But as the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has appointed you to the oil of gladness beyond your skin. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up. And like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <coughs> Let us hear the hymn, It Came Upon the Midnight Quitter.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In preparing a message for this Christmas Eve service, it was very difficult to think of aspects that would bring joy or peace to anyone with COVID-19 and the new variant of the Omicron. There were many issues and each of us faced our own because no one's left on skate. And especially at Christmas, we have a picture in our mind of what we want it to be. But we can't always have what we want. And so I looked for where I could find something that would bring us a message to let us know that we do have power and control. So I'd like to tell you a very short story of how a mother explains the difficulties and hardships that happen in life to her adult daughter. A young woman went to her mother and told her all about her life and how things were so hard for her. She said she did not know how she was going to make it and felt like she just wanted to give up. She was tired of fighting and struggling. It seemed as if one problem was solved, then a new one popped up. And her mother calmly took her into the kitchen. She filled three pots with water and placed each on a high fire. Soon the pots began to boil. And in the first pot, her mother placed carrots. In the second, she placed eggs. And in the last, she placed coffee ground beans. She let them sit and boil without saying another word. In about 20 minutes, she turned off all the burners. She then dished the carrots out and placed them in a bowl. She pulled the eggs out and placed them in a bowl. And she ladled the coffee out and placed it in a bowl. Then she turned to her daughter and she asked, Tell me, what do you see? Carrots, eggs, and coffee, her daughter replied. Her mother brought her over closer, asked her to feel the carrots. She did. And she noticed that they were soft. The mother then asked the daughter to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard-boiled egg. Finally, the mother asked the daughter to sip the coffee. The daughter smiled as she tasted its rich aroma. The daughter then asked, what does it mean, Mom? Her mother explained that each of these objects would face the exact same adversity, oil and water, and each reacted differently. The carrot went in as strong, hard, and firm, and unrelenting. And however, by being in that pot of oil and water, it became something that became softened and pliable. The egg, on the other hand, had been very fragile, and its thin outer shell had protected its inside. But after being in the boiling water, the egg had become very hard. The coffee grounds, however, were quite unique. After they were in the boiling water, they changed the water. So which one are you, she asked her daughter. I thought a lot after I read that story, and I realized it's what we do that changes what takes place. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean? So, this is what I'd like you to keep in your mind. Which am I? Am I the carrot that seems strong, but yet with pain and adversity I will, and I become soft, and I lose all my strength? Am I the egg that starts out with malleable heart, but changes with the heat, and becomes hard? Because then I lose my full spirit. But after hardship or some other trial, I can harden and stick it. Does my shell look the same? Yes. But on the inside, am I bitter and tough 
with a stiff spirit and a hardened heart? Or am I like that coffee bean? The bean actually changes the hot water. The very circumstances that brings the pain. When the water gets hot, it releases the fragrance and the flesh, the flavor of it. So, if you were like the bean, when things are at their worst, you get better and change the situation around you. The Gospel of John speaks to us about our inner spirit, of the power of God overcoming the darkness. The light came into this world, and the light overcame the darkness. God changed the world for those who were seeking the light. And no, God cannot do it alone any more than Christ could come into the world without John back. Opening ourselves to the light that God presents to us, allowing ourselves to be changed by Him and by the knowledge of the Son Jesus Christ, the gift He freely gave to us. Are we able to change the world around us? And I decided, yes, I can. Regardless of the Christians I plan, I am still going to celebrate Christmas. But it's up to me if I celebrate it with joy in my heart and faith in God, or if I step wrong and do nothing. I'd like to end with the prayer of Christmas from Robert Louis Stevenson. O oh God, our loving Father, help us rightly to remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angel, the gladness of the shepherd, and the worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Deliver us from evil by the blessing that Christmas brings and teaches us to be merry with clear hearts. May this Christmas morning make us happy to be your children, and may the Christmas evening bring us to our bed with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now we will make our statement of faith in the Nineteen Creed. I believe in one in God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of all life for all worlds, the Lord of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not me. Being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and it was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge for the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son endeavor is worshipped and glorified, who is faced by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I hope for the resurrection of the dead and the life, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us hear the hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. We shall now have the prayers of the people. Heavenly Father, on this holy night, as we celebrate your birth in Bethlehem, we pray to you, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for the comfort you give to the victims of injustice and disasters in our society, the poor, the hungry, and the oppressed, and the victims of war, violence, and terrorism. We also pray for Zachary Fave and his family as they pray for his safe return. We pray to you, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for the comfort you give to all First Nations and Aboriginal peoples in our country as the work of reconciliation and understanding continues. We pray to you saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for the guidance and protection you give in these difficult, uncertain times. We ask you to protect, strengthen, and bless our Canadian Forces personnel and deployments overseas, the chaplains with them, and their families at home. Grant them courage, compassion, strength, and all they need for the living of these days. Sustain them through their every trial. Remind them of the humanity they share, even with those who are called the enemy. We pray to you, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for the church and our diocese, our nation, and our world. We pray for our Bishop Sandra, our Archdeacon Simon, and the people and clergy in the Diocese of the Ilsa Southwest in the Church of Nigeria. We pray to you, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for the guidance and strength that you give to the Church locally, especially our own parish of South Queens. We pray for our Rector, Reverend Cherry, and her family, our Associate Priest, Reverend Judy, and her family, and all those who do your work in the life of our parish family. In our Queens County cycle of prayer, we pray for the people and clergy of Bethan United Church in Mill Village. We pray to you, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for those who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and other special occasions in their lives. We offer special prayers tonight for Debbie Anthony, who is celebrating a birthday. We pray to you, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for the comfort you give to those who have been sick at home, in hospitals or nursing homes. We offer special prayers tonight for Allison, Johnny, Judy, Baby Anna, Janice Alexander, Allison Allen, Nalan Clark, Faye Conrad, Betty Everett, Ron Fitzgerald, Holly Gunn, Matthew Hack, Joan Johnson, David and those from St. James Church with ongoing health concerns, Lana Ketty, John Lee, Bertha Manthorne, Pamela Miles, Ralph Morton, Bill Nevin, Reverend Louis Pinnell, Carol and Sam Sampson, Connie Schaefer, Barb Scoby, Darlene Sutton, Reverend Victoria Sonos, Dan Burge, Gertrude Wagner, Chris Walker, and Jeff Webster. In silence or out loud, let us remember them and others who are sick. May they draw hope and strength from the healing power and grace of your love. We pray to you, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Father, Father, we thank you for the comfort and strength that you give to the families and all others who mourn them the passing of your faithful servants. We offer special prayers tonight for the family and friends of Jean Feinder, as well as for the families and friends of those who have been remembered with memorial gifts to Trinity Church at this time. Tina Whalen, Eugene Bunny and Catherine Onis, Denny and Louise Freller, Marilyn, Fred, and Kendall Condon, Robert Weary and Michael, Charles Connolly, Jordan and Dorothy Myra, Gertie Monroe, John Anthony, Raymond Alexander, 
Alan and Todd Davis, Mr. and Mrs. Clayton Wynott, Clayton Wynott Jr., Arnold and Nellie Wynott, Gary Wynott, Linda Wynott and Wynott family loved ones, Joyce McLeod, Wolf family loved ones, Greeno family loved ones. Let us remember them and other faithful departed, either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Bless those who mourn, eternal God, with the comfort of your love, that they may face each new day with hope and the certainty that nothing can destroy the good that has been given. May their memories become joyful, their days enriched with friendship, and their lives encircled by your love. We pray to you, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and be seen in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith Turn unto him. Have mercy upon me. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. What are the comfortable words our Savior Christ says unto all that truly turn to him? Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have an eternal life. And what does St. Paul say? This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sins. And what does St. John say? If anyone is sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so too. It is very meet, right in our vow and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, though thou caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving. 
thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving need thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus, Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded, and the entirely desire of thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins, and to all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of thy table. But our saving Lord, whose property is always to have mercy, grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may have a more welcome union in he and us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. And during this time of COVID, we are unable to share the bread or the cup. And on your behalf, I will consume the elements. And I pray that you may feel in the presence of God. body of Christ, broken for us all. The blood of Christ shed for us all.
let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness toward us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, and here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our hand and duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom the thing is of the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace for the world toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sinnest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, and most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. I wish you all a Merry Christmas, one that is filled with blessing and love. Let us hear the hymn, Joy to the World.
to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.